On this episode, we're heading north to the central coast. Although not really part of Sydney, it's only a one hour drive north, so an easy day trip for Sydney siders. We'll visit three locations, with our first stop being the Central Coast Wetlands Pioneer Dairy. Consisting of 155 hectares, the dairy was operational until 1986. Now it is mainly used for weddings, functions, and some great bird watching. The first thing you see when you come to the dairy is the massive lake, and that's where we will start our bird watching. The intermediate egret was recently separated into three separate species, with the Australian bird now called the plumed egret, a very appropriate name. Heading for a walk out the back of the dairy, there's kilometres of trails, with common birds and not so common birds.
warnings around here. And they're not lying. Not five metres from the sign with this massive red-bellied black snake. Be careful where you're walking. Two butcher birds found in New South Wales can both be found at the Pioneer Dairy. The easiest way to separate the grey from the pied is the grey has white on the throat and the pied has black. Here's both birds side by side, the pied on the left and the grey on the right. five minutes up the road at McPherson's Road Swamp, a haven for many water birds and one very special stork.
We saw the royal spoonbill earlier at the dairy, but here we get a great look at its feeding technique. The structure of its bill limits it to eating in water only 40 centimetres deep. The bird has little vibration detectors on the inside of the spoon. As it sweeps side to side, if it detects something, it will flip it up in the air and swallow it whole. All those common water birds are very cute, but the main reason people come to the swamp is to see the stunning pair of resident black-necked storks. This breeding pair can quite often be found here or at the dairy. The male has a dark black eyes, while the female has a stunning yellow eyes.
come at the right time of year and you might meet some of the stork's young ones. This season, the pair had two chicks. I only saw one on this occasion and it was getting quite big. We're heading 10 minutes south to an area near Palmdale. This spot is especially good for birds that like the dark forest. One bird that likes the dark forest is the green catbird. If you've never heard its call, it can be quite creepy. There's over a hundred species of monarchs found worldwide. And they include shrike bills, paradise flycatchers, and even the magpie larks. One of the most common ones in Sydney is the black-faced monarch, which also likes a very dark forest. A prized bird to photograph is the noisy pitta. The one I saw was a juvenile. They're quite hard to find, but once you locate one, they're actually quite cooperative. They usually bounce around 
and then stand perfectly still for a couple of seconds, as if posing for a photo. Thank you.